activists right now are calling for a defunding of the police. The Minneapolis City Council just agreed on a bill on this. Right before I came to tape the show, there was a clip on CNN from a Minneapolis City Councilwoman who said, quote, it's a place of privilege if someone breaking into your home wants to call the police. This is gaining a lot of steam. Nancy Pelosi this morning just refused to answer if she would support defunding the police. I just want to know from you, do you support defunding and removing police from American communities? And if not, why do you think there's such a, a hard time being differentiated right now between defunding and reforming police departments? So, Megan, I think that a big part of this conversation really is about reimagining how we do public safety in America, which I support, which is this. We have confused the, the idea that to achieve safety, you put more cops on the street. Instead of understanding to achieve safe and healthy communities, you put more resources into the public education system of those communities, into affordable housing, into home ownership, into access to capital for small businesses, access to health care regardless of, of how much money people have. That's how you achieve safe and healthy communities. And so we really do need to understand and reimagine what and how we can actually make and help make communities safe. Because here's the bottom line. Um, if you contrast, you know, many communities which are have a heavy presence of police to middle and upper middle class suburbs in America, you will not see that presence of police. But what you will see, you will see families who have an income that allows them to get through the end of the month. You will see good public schools. You will see people who have access to health care and can afford it. You will see people who have jobs. And so this has to be the conversation, which is how are we going to be smart in achieving what should be our collective goal, which is that all communities are safe and knowing that safe communities are usually safe because they are healthy, healthy because of a number of things, including the economy, including education, including access to health care. And, and that's how I think about this. You know, in, in many cities in America, over one third of their city budget goes to police. So we have to have this conversation. What are we doing? Should, yeah, what what about the here. money going to, to social services? What about the money going to helping people with job training? What about helping with, with the mental health issues that communities are being plagued with for which we're putting no resources? Um, and most and here's the other thing. When, when, I, when I talk to, to law enforcement, they know that they don't want to be, nor are they skilled, to be the ones who are responding to someone with mental illness or substance abuse or, or the homeless population. But in many cities, that's what's happening because we are not directing those resources, those public resources, to where they need to go, which is addressing mental health, homelessness, uh, substance abuse, so that we don't have to have a police response because we are smarter. Senator, I hear you loud and clear, and I don't think there's any rational American right now who doesn't think that we need to take a cold, hard look at reforming our police. But there was a video that went viral over the weekend of the mayor of Minneapolis being yelled at, saying, yes or no question, are you for defunding the police? So I'm going to ask the same question the protesters asked him. Are you for defunding the police? How are you defining defund the police? Well, I'm not for anything remotely for that, so I would ask the protesters but, the same but, thing. But I assume it's, re I assume, and again, this is something that is new to me, I assume it's removing police and, as um, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said, bringing in a whole new way of, of governing and a law and order into, into a community. And my understanding, again, this is something that has just come into my understanding recently, is that you, you would not have police officers, like this Minneapolis City Councilwoman said, that I would be a place of privilege if someone broke into my home and I wanted to call the police. So, again, we need to reimagine how we are achieving public safety in America. And to have cities where one third of their entire budget is going to policing, but yet there is a dire need in those same cities for mental health resources, for, for resources going into public schools, resources going into job training and, and, and job creation. Come on, we have to be honest about this, that there is not, actually not a consensus around this, because if there were, we would actually see smarter distribution of resources in, in, our, in our country um, to, to address the and issues Senator, Senator Harris, that need to be addressed. Yes. And Senator, this is, this is Sonny, and I, and I think uh, just, to, just to add to the conversation, 
defunding the police doesn't mean abolishing the police. It means taking some of those funds that are typically one third of the budget of a city and, and giving some of those funds to services like mental health uh, and education and, and mental health resources. But I want to change the subject and ask another question. Um, mm -hmm. Joe Biden has already committed to choosing a female running mate. Uh, mm -hmm. Given the current climate, it occurs to me that Biden must also choose a black woman as his running mate to energize the base, to show his commitment to the community, someone who is representative of the community affected and protesting in large part because of the issues. Um, do you agree with that? I want Joe Biden oh, to make yes a decision. Yes or no, because we're out of time. I okay. <laughs> it's not that simple. I just want him to win. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he Listen, has to win. You have to... <laughs> 